Want to speak real Portuguese from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at portuguesepod101.com. Oi, gente, tudo bom? Paloma here. Welcome to top 10 ways to remember words. Eu aprendo sobre as raízes das palavras e como palavras diferentes são relacionadas umas com as outras. I learn about the roots of words and how different words are related to each other. É mais fácil de lembrar as palavras quando você sabe as raízes delas. It's easier to remember words when you know the roots. So you can relate some verbs with now, for example, correr, to run, and corrida, running. Also, fight, luta, with fighting, lutar. Eu categorizo novas palavras com outras palavras relacionadas que eu já conheço. I categorize new words with other related words that I already know. I think, for example, you could categorize all words that are related to home. Lar, casa, casão, casarão, casinha. There would be different ways to say home or house in Portuguese. Eu costumo assistir TV ou vídeos no YouTube que são feitos para crianças pequenas. I often watch TV or YouTube videos that are designed for young children. One of my favorite shows when I was little would be Castelo Hachimbu, Hachimbu Castle. Another one that was my favorite was Cocoricó. Cocoricó is the sound that the rooster do. Cocoricó! Eu procurei alguns vídeos infantis no YouTube para aprender português. I searched for some kids videos on YouTube to learn Portuguese. Eu escuto músicas e memorizo as letras. I listen to songs and memorize the lyrics. This is a very nice technique because usually you like the song you're learning, so it's easier to learn. That was one of the ways I learned English. Eu baixei várias músicas brasileiras para aprender português. I downloaded many Brazilian songs to learn Portuguese. Eu falo as palavras em voz alta para que eu possa ouvi-las. I say words out loud so that I can actually hear them. One thing is to understand the language and the other thing is to be able to speak and communicate in the language. If you don't try to speak it out loud, you will never know if you can communicate and speak in the language. So you gotta try it, don't be ashamed, don't tenha vergonha, just try to speak it. Eu falo tudo errado, mas eu tento falar em português. I say it all wrong, but I try to speak in Portuguese. Eu falo o máximo possível com falantes nativos. I speak as often as possible with native speakers. If you're speaking with native speakers, there's no way you won't learn the language or the words that you want to remember. Because if you don't say the correct words, they will help you and try to correct you. That's very nice to have people that speak the language to motivate you too. Eu tenho vários amigos brasileiros que me ajudam com o meu português. I have many Brazilian friends that help me with my Portuguese. Eu tento pensar em português, porque daí se torna natural para o meu processo de pensamento. I try to think in Portuguese, so it becomes natural to my thought process. One of the things that I noticed when I was learning English is that if you don't think in the language you're speaking, your brain has to do so many translations that you won't be able to become fluent in that language. So try to Think little by little in the language you're learning, that it will help you a lot. Quando eu estou pensando em português, eu não consigo pensar em inglês. When I'm thinking in Portuguese, I can't think in English. Eu tento usar a língua repetidamente no contexto da vida cotidiana. I try to use the language routinely in the context of daily life. You can call little things in Portuguese in your house, like nouns, for example, spoon, colher, fork, garfo. You can also use your dog for talking to him in Portuguese and teach him some tricks in Portuguese. A minha professora de inglês só falava em inglês com o gato dela. My English teacher only spoke in English with her cat. That's true. Eu uso a repetição. Ler, escrever e falar as palavras várias vezes. I use repetition. Reading, writing and speaking words over and over again. You know that commercial that is on TV and is like every 10 minutes the commercial is there again on your TV? There's no way you forget that commercial, right? You gotta do the same with words. You just say that word again and again and again and there will be no way you forget it. Eu precisava decorar uma frase em português e fiquei falando ela o dia inteiro. I needed to memorize a phrase in Portuguese, so I spoke it all day long. 
ler o máximo possível. Especialmente o jornal me ajuda a lembrar as palavras. Reading as much as possible, especially the newspaper, helps me to remember words. Newspaper is kind of advanced Portuguese because you won't find easy conversational words, they will be more formal and business words. But if you're already in that level, yeah, that would be a great help for you to read newspaper. Nowadays you can find newspaper online and also on YouTube there are many news channels. So that's a very good way to memorize and remember everyday words. Eu leio o jornal todos os dias para aprender palavras de economia. I read the newspaper every day to learn economy words. Ufim, the end. Thanks a lot for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you next time. Ciao! For some, learning a new language seems to come naturally. For others, the entire process feels more like a tooth and nail struggle. However, if you've had a negative experience learning a new language at one point in time, don't let that discourage you from trying again. The truth is that learning any language is never easy, but it's definitely possible. Sometimes the difference between success and failure has less to do with your abilities or talents and a lot more to do with the way you look at things. In this video, we're going to look at how to avoid five serious mistakes made by new language learners. Number one, listen before you speak. Being slow to speak and quick to listen is good life advice, whether or not you're learning a foreign language. Effective listening is essential to communication. As a beginner, there is a tendency to concentrate so much on what you're going to say and how you're going to say it that you can completely miss the meaning or heart of what the other person is trying to communicate. Not only will this impair your ability to listen in your target language, it will also stall what little conversation you had going. Remember that conversations are a two-way street. If you're speaking more than listening, then you actually have more of a monologue on your hands than a dialogue. The inputs of language learning, listening and reading, are just as important as the outputs, speaking and writing. For a beginner, inputs are even more crucial, as they are the main way you acquire new vocabulary. We even go so far to say that for new students, the best method for learning involves more listening than it does speaking though that may change with higher proficiency levels. Number two, don't be embarrassed when you do speak. People's next mistake usually comes from the other side of the spectrum, where new learners are too scared or embarrassed to contribute to a conversation. The fear of making mistakes and embarrassing yourself can paralyze your language learning. It's vital to remember that everyone makes mistakes. Even native speakers had to find their way through the language when they were children. Making mistakes while learning a new language is inevitable, but it's also a good thing. The faster you make mistakes, the quicker you can correct them and move on with your learning. So instead of being afraid to make mistakes, try looking at them as steps towards progress. In reality, that's what they really are. Number three, don't fixate on minor issues. If taken in all at once, a new language can feel overwhelming to learn. It's so easy to get discouraged by all your little mistakes and conversational mishaps and you lose sight of the progress you're making. In addition to mistakes, you'll also come across plateaus, where you study and practice consistently but don't see any results for a significant amount of time. But whether you face errors or plateaus, remember that these things are minor obstacles on the road to fluency. The most important thing is not to give up, stick with it. If you stay persistent, your mistakes will be corrected and your abilities will improve. But if you slow down or throw in the towel completely, then you'll either subvert your progress or nix it altogether. So remember that as long as you're still studying and learning the language, you can't lose. It might feel like you're losing the battle for language learning for a little while, but hang in there. A practical way to help you stay motivated is to make small weekly goals. Research shows that goal setting has a significant impact on learning. Try picking one aspect of grammar or a collection of new words or phrases to study for the next seven days. At the end of the week, check your progress and measure your success. Setting little benchmarks like this will give you a rightful sense of accomplishment. Number four, remember that immersion isn't magical. A lot of people think that by moving to a foreign country, they will learn the language by osmosis. But whether you learn abroad or at home, you still need to study and practice the language. Living in a new country gives you way more opportunities to do this than staying at home. But if you don't consciously take advantage of these opportunities while living abroad, it won't benefit your language learning. 
If you're an expat living in a foreign country, there's a natural inclination to hang out around other expats. Learning a language and living in a foreign culture is hard and uncomfortable. For better or worse, we're often drawn to the easier road. If you made the decision to study abroad, then you want to hang out with native-speaking people as much as possible. You have the rest of your life to be with people who speak your language. This doesn't mean ignore your expat friends. Just be sure that you're giving proper attention to your language learning. Languages are better lived than they are learned. Number five, be open-minded. Languages are better lived than they are learned. When learning a new language, your brain will want to conform the new grammar and vocabulary to your native language norms and grammar rules. Ignore your brain on this one. At first, you might feel completely wrong saying a sentence that is in fact correct. After a certain point in language learning, there is a switch that goes off. When your brain finally realizes that you're not speaking your native language, but a new one altogether. This could take a while though, especially if this is your first time learning a new language. Until then, do what you know is correct, even if it feels a bit weird when you say it. The same goes for culture. Just as you want to be open to the differences in the language, don't forget to be open to the differences in the culture too. Hopefully this video helped you shift your thinking and approach language learning in a way that will help you become fluent faster. And that you'll learn to enjoy the journey towards fluency and savor the language for its own sake. That's probably the biggest language learning secret there is. And for even more ways to get started learning a new language, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Hi everyone, Paloma here. Welcome to top 10 hardest words to pronounce in Portuguese. Avó, grandmother. Here you need to hear the sound of the last O in the syllable. It should be a, an open O as we say in Portuguese. Avó. A minha avó faz um bolo delicioso. My grandmother makes a delicious cake. Avô, grandfather. Can you hear the difference between avó and avô? Here you have a closed O. Avô. Meu avô era um inventor. My grandfather was an inventor. Cachorro. Dog. Here you may find the CH, sho, and the double R, ho, a little different for you. O nome do meu cachorro é Toy. The name of my dog is Toy. Coração. Heart. This word may be hard for you because of the R A, ra, and the C A O. São. A minha almofada tem formato de coração. My pillow is heart-shaped. Mãe, mother. Here you also have a nasal sound, mãe. A minha mãe está brava comigo. My mother is angry at me. You can also say mamãe, which is mommy in English. Mão, hands. Also here we have a nasal sound, mão. Remember to use your nose to say these words. A minha mão tem cinco dedos. My hand has five fingers. Mulher, woman. Mulher has this lhe, which is L-H. It's not that hard, right? Mulher. Onde fica o banheiro das mulheres? Where is the women's bathroom? Orelhão, payphone. I love this word in Portuguese because orelhão is big ear and because Brazilians payphones look like big ears here. Eu não consigo encontrar um orelhão. I can't find a payphone. Yeah, everyone has cell phone today. Quarteirão, block. So here you also have this nasal sound and the R, quar. It's not hard, but you need to practice that to, you know, be more fluent. But if you use the caipira accent, it would be quarteirão, which is easier for English speakers. There's also a McDonald's burger that is called quarteirão. It's really big. Trabalho, job. So also you have the R and the LH here, trabalho. You can also use the word trabalho to mean job and work. Eu gosto muito do meu trabalho. I really like my job. Or, eu tenho muito trabalho hoje. I have a lot of work today. The end, theme, and that's it for today. Thanks a lot for watching and I hope to you subscribe to our website and our videos. See you next time. Ciao, ciao. 
Want to speak real Portuguese from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at portuguesepod101.com. So, you decided to learn a new language. At first, the idea seemed exciting. You bought a phrase book, dictionary, and a subscription to an online class, ready to dive headfirst into the language. For the first day or two, all was well. You gained ground quickly, learning a few basic phrases and words. A week before, learning that language was just a dream, but now you're actually doing it. Then, the third and fourth day roll around. The excitement is wearing off. You encouraged yourself to continue, and another week or two goes by, but with a lot less progress. Suddenly, learning a new language doesn't fill you with excitement anymore. Now it feels more like dread. Sometimes it feels like you're drowning in grammatical cases, verb conjugations, and wonky pronunciation. It all seems too much to handle, so you start to think about giving up. But we encourage you not to give up. Learning a foreign language is difficult. We won't pretend like it isn't. But that doesn't mean you can't do it. Sometimes you just need to take a step back, reevaluate your approach, and come back to the language with a different perspective. In this video, we'll look at four tips for when learning a new language feels overwhelming. Number one, set aside a designated study time. Consistency is key when learning a foreign language. Studying 15 minutes seven days a week will benefit you more than cramming in two hours one day a week. Set aside an amount of time that works best for you. If you can afford to spend an hour every day learning, that's awesome, go for it. But don't feel bad if you can't spend that much time. Even 10 or 15 minutes a day goes a long way. Breaking up your learning into manageable time segments will relieve a lot of the stress that can come with studying a new language. Learning is not a race. Go at your own pace and try not to compare your progress with anyone else's. Number two, take it one bite at a time. Now that you have your schedule under control, it's time to focus on what you'll actually be studying. It's recommended that every one to two weeks, you focus on learning a very specific piece of the language. It could be a conjugation group, a case, tense, or a collection of theme vocabulary. Whatever you choose, hone in on it and do your best to feel comfortable with it before you move on to something else. Ever heard the saying, how do you eat an elephant? Focusing on one thing at a time helps you break the language into digestible chunks. Number three, expose yourself to the language in different ways. Don't just sit around reading about grammar all day. Obviously, knowledge of grammar is important, but you want to spice up your practice as much as possible. In addition to grammatical study, try to mix in a combination of reading, writing, speaking, and listening. Try to practice reading by either translating a simple article into your native language, or maybe if you're a beginner, pick up a children's book in your target language. For writing, you can try to write out a fictional conversation between you and yourself even. Use the phrases you know to create a mock conversation and don't use any words you can't think of or you don't remember. To practice speaking, you can find native speakers locally at a language club or at a meetup. You can also find them online in a language exchange. For listening, a great podcast should do the trick. Spread out each type of practice, listening, reading, speaking, and writing across your regular language study schedule. This will give you a balanced experience in the language and should help keep things interesting. This method also works well when you use it to focus on a single aspect of the language like we talked about above. Number four, set mini goals, not just big ones. If your only language learning goal is to be fluent, you're likely setting yourself up for disappointment. While speaking fluently can be your ultimate goal, it shouldn't be your only one. Try to set mini goals month by month and week by week. It could be something simple. Learn 20 new verbs, practice a new case, or speak with three native speakers. As long as it's specific and reasonable to achieve in a shorter amount of time, it should work fine. Not having mini goals alongside your ultimate goal is a lot like sprinting across a huge open field. There's no reference point, so for much of the time, it feels like you're not any closer to your goal. It's not that you're not moving forward, it just feels like you're not. Without any trees or buildings to run past, it seems like you're running in place. Mini goals are like the trees and buildings of your language race. They help you see that you're moving forward and give you a sense of accomplishment. The desire for perfection can get in the way of your progress. Don't freak out when you struggle to speak or make a mistake. It's all a part of the learning process. Also, don't be afraid to speak, even if you know what you'll say won't be totally correct. 
It's better to do your best to communicate in the language and get it wrong than to never try at all. Learning a new language isn't always easy. In fact, oftentimes it's very hard. Don't let that discourage you though. Use these tips to help keep you focused yet unstressed in your language learning. A little perseverance will go a long way. Before long, you'll be speaking better than you may have thought was possible. And for even more help learning a new language without getting overwhelmed, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to speak your target language with confidence and impress native speakers? When learning to speak a new language, you have lots of things to think about, including grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation. Because you're thinking of all of these things and trying to speak, it can be difficult to communicate with confidence, especially in the beginning. This is why it's helpful to make confidence building exercises part of your language learning process. In this video, you'll learn seven ways to boost your confidence. One, read out loud. This might seem pretty basic, but it's a great way to practice speaking. Reading aloud lets you practice speaking without having to think about grammar or things to talk about. Reading out loud lets you focus on your pronunciation and the rhythm of the language. It can help you learn to speak more smoothly and quickly without even thinking about it. If you're using our lessons, read the dialogue out loud as you listen. You can read along with the dialogue tool, the lesson notes, or the transcript. Two, read like a child. This might sound strange, but think about children learning to read. They go slow and sound everything out. Maybe it takes two or three tries before they read a new word smoothly, and a few more tries before they can read it at a natural pace. This example applies to language learning too. If you find a complex sentence in something you're reading, read it slowly at first, then speed up. With practice, you'll be able to say it easily. It might feel a bit silly to speak very slowly, but this kind of practice can help you identify tough sounds you might miss or say incorrectly when reading quickly. Three, use the dialogue breakdown tool. If you're using our site, this is a great tool to take advantage of. It breaks down lesson conversations into individual lines. You can listen to the audio for each line, learn what each line means, and can reread and review as much as you want. Four, Use the voice recorder to record and compare yourself with native speakers. Just click on the microphone icon next to each line in the dialogue section. You can use this tool to perfect your pronunciation if you like, but this is also something you can use to work on speaking with confidence at native level speed. You'll find this tool in the dialogue section of all of our lessons. Five, repeat and review old lesson conversations. Reviewing what you've studied in the past is the best way to make sure you maintain what you've learned. Go back to older lessons, download the lesson dialogue tracks, and re-listen to the conversations again and again. Or you can reread the dialogue lines from previous lessons until you've mastered them all. Six, shadow conversations. Repeat what you hear out loud. This tactic is important, but it can be tricky when you're doing a brand new lesson. If you're reviewing dialogues from lessons you've done though, it's super easy to do. Just listen to the dialogue and repeat what you hear. Shadowing means mimicking the speaker as soon as they speak, following their intonation and rhythms as closely as possible. Seven, send recordings to your Premium Plus teacher. If you wanna speak with confidence, there's no better confidence boost than feedback from a native speaker. And you get just that with a Premium Plus teacher. You can record yourself reciting a lesson dialogue or any dialogue of your own, and your teacher will give you specific tips on how to improve. From the tips your teacher gives you, choose at least one and practice, practice, practice. Being able to react quickly and with confidence in a conversation is typically not something you can do on your first try, but if you continue practicing, you'll gradually find yourself speaking with ease. 
And for even more ways to build your speaking confidence, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey everyone, welcome to your monthly review, the monthly show on language learning, where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, new study tools, resources, and where we show off learners like you speaking the language. That is, if you're brave enough to participate and become language learning famous. All the materials mentioned in this video are available for you right now on our website. Click the link in the description to sign up for your free lifetime account and start speaking in minutes. Okay, today's topic is why your worst days are the best days to study. So, have you ever had a day where you planned on learning language and you just couldn't go through with it? Even if learning a new language is your personal goal, something that you really want? Well, today you're going to learn, one, why these bad days happen, and two, why you'll get your best work done on your worst days. Let's start. Why bad days happen with language learning. When I say bad days, I don't mean when you're too busy or when life gets in the way. These things are unavoidable. I mean days when you're just not in the mood. It's a perfectly good day. The sun is shining. No bad news. But you just can't get yourself to study. You're just wasting the day. So here's why they happen. First, it's the law of diminishing returns in action. What does this mean? Think of it as eating pizza every day for five days a week. On the first day, the first two slices are great, but by the third one, you're feeling queasy. It's not as good. And by the fifth day, you're sick of pizza. That's the law of diminishing returns, when the benefits start decreasing over time. And it happens with language learning. When you first start, you learn a lot of phrases and it feels good, you're excited. But as time goes on, you don't feel like you're learning much, and this affects your mood and motivation, so you're not as excited to learn anymore, so you start having bad days. Second, bad days happen because you overthink things and ruin it for yourself. It's like dreading going to the gym. Let's say you went yesterday, you have to go again today, so you're dreading it all day long. Ah, I gotta go again. You set yourself up for a bad mood and a bad day. Third, bad days are a natural part of the cycle. Some days will be good. Most days you'll feel indifferent. Some days will be bad, but that's completely natural and anyone with long-term projects and goals feels the same. And fourth, you can't be on 100% of the time. So just like days can't always be good, you too can't always be on and ready to go all the time. Again, just a realistic and expected part of the journey. Now, let's jump into the second part why you'll get your best work done on your worst days. So, why will you get your best work done? First, it's not that bad once you start. Once you've spent 10 or 15 minutes learning a language, it's not so bad. People say the same thing about the gym. If you show up and put in a bit of time, it gets easier. Second, it's overcoming a mental barrier. What I mean is, when most of us have bad days, our brain automatically says, okay, can't be done today, stop, we're done. But if you just work through it, you don't take these bad days so seriously anymore. And that means you're more likely to stick with your language learning goal. This brings us to the next point. Third, it's your best work because working on a bad day only strengthens your habit of language learning. Remember, habits are what will help you master a language over time. If you can stick to a habit on a bad day, your habit only gets stronger and it will lead you to fluency. And finally, fourth, it just feels good to overcome something. Imagine you have a bad day, but you still put in 10 minutes of language learning. It's a real sense of achievement, and it doesn't matter if you do a 10 minute lesson or a five minute lesson. The fact that you made some progress on a bad day will give you the motivation you need to keep going. Now, speaking of lessons, here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, the best of 2018 language learning cheat sheets. If you want to get access to all of our conversation cheat sheets that we sent out this year, here's your chance. Download this PDF bundle right now. Next, the brand new supermarket cheat sheet. 
With this cheat sheet, you'll learn must-know shopping phrases and vocab for meats, vegetables, and all products that you'll find in a supermarket. And finally, the most common adjectives. If you're a beginner and don't yet know these adjectives, then this is a perfect chance to boost your vocabulary. This one minute lesson will get them stuck in your head, guaranteed. To get these free lessons and resources, just click the link in the description below. All right, everyone. Now we're asking you to submit a video or audio file of yourself speaking the language. If you do, you'll win three free months of access to our learning program, which includes your very own teacher. Here's the challenge for you. Yes, everyone watching this. Record a 30 second to one minute video or audio clip. Introduce yourself in the language. Share your name, where you're from, and why you're studying this language. And you'll win a three month Premium Plus subscription. To submit, Click on the link in the description. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Then fill out the form, attach the audio or video file, and press submit. We may feature you in next month's episode. So a lot of learners will see you and your progress and will hopefully get inspired to improve and master the language. To submit a recording, click the link in the description and follow the instructions on the page. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about how to set achievable language learning goals and resolutions. In the meantime, submit your recording if you're brave. Like and share this video and leave a comment to tell us what language learning tactics you'd like us to talk about. See you next time. Bye. Hey, everyone. Welcome to your monthly review, the monthly show on language learning where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, new study tools, resources, and where we show off learners like you speaking the language. That is, if you're brave enough to participate and become language learning famous. All the materials mentioned in this video are available for you right now on our website. Click the link in the description to sign up for your free lifetime account and start speaking in minutes. Okay, today's topic is how to set achievable language goals and resolutions, your New Year's resolution solution. So, for those of you that have set a language goal for 2019, what is it? Leave a comment and tell me. And for those of you that laugh at New Year's resolutions because they just don't work, this is for you. Stick around. Today, you're going to learn, number one, the top three reasons why language goals fail, and number two, what you can do to succeed with your resolution. In other words, how to set successful language goals. Let's jump into today's topic, how to set achievable language goals and resolutions. And speaking of New Year's resolutions, it's almost like a joke nowadays, isn't it? You set a resolution, you try to do it in January. By February, there's no progress and doing it isn't fun anymore. You quit and put it off until many years later when you start regretting all the things you've never done. So what's the problem with setting resolutions and why do we keep failing? Let's jump into part one, the top three reasons why language goals fail. First of all, regardless of what most people say, setting resolutions or goals is a good thing. You have to know where you're going and what you want to achieve, right? Otherwise, you'd spend days, months, years watching YouTube and have nothing to show for all the time you put in. But the problem with most resolutions is it's usually something like, I wanna master Chinese, I wanna lose weight, I wanna be fluent in Japanese. People set very big, vague goals. And that's the first reason why resolutions fail. Resolutions fail because they are non-specific and unmeasurable. What do I mean by that? Take a goal like, I wanna be fluent in English, Korean, or Japanese this year. The problem is that's a very vague goal, right? What do you mean by fluent? And how can you measure how much progress you need to be fluent in the language? You can't. It doesn't tell you anything about how much Japanese you should learn today, tomorrow, or how many minutes of Japanese to speak by month one, by month two, what resources to use, and when to stop and take a rest. So again, the first reason is resolutions fail because they are non-specific and unmeasurable. The second reason is New Year's resolutions fail because they're unrealistic. And you might say, but isn't it good to aim for the stars and set huge goals? 
Sure, it's not bad to want to go far, but if you say, I want to be fluent by September, and you just started learning a language today, it's not impossible, but are you ready to commit yourself to nothing but language learning, six to eight hours a day, nonstop? If not, you need to be a little more realistic about your goals. The third reason is resolutions fail because there's no action plan. The problem is you'll still fail even with a specific and realistic goal if you don't know when and how you're going to do it. For example, when will you study? How long will you study for every day? And how will you study? So resolutions fail for three reasons. One, they're non-specific and unmeasurable. Two, they're unrealistic. And three, there's no action plan. Now, how do you set New Year's resolutions and actually succeed? Your goals should be one, specific and measurable, two, realistic, and three, have an action plan. So the complete opposite of the mistakes most learners usually make. And there are two more rules. Four, you need to set a deadline. And five, break down your yearly goal into smaller monthly goals. So how would this work? Let's say my New Year's resolution is to have a 30-minute conversation in Japanese by December 31st, and not, I want to learn Japanese one day, hopefully. Already, you can see that it's one, specific and measurable. You can measure 30 minutes, right? Two, it's realistic. I'm aiming for 30 minutes, not fluency. There's a clear deadline, December 31st. Before we get into the action plan, there's another important part. I break my resolution down into smaller monthly goals. So let's say my goal is to speak two minutes of Japanese conversation by January 31st, 2019. Again, it's small and measurable, just two minutes. I can time myself and see how far along I am. There's a clear deadline, it's realistic. I'm not looking to master the whole language, just reach the two minute conversation mark. Now, what about your action plan? For that, you just need to answer these questions. When will you study? How long will you study every day? Where do you plan to study? How will you study? What's your study schedule? This is the most important part because this tells you when and how to study. So, when will you study? I'll study at 9 p.m. on weekdays, so five days a week. How long will you study every day? I'll study for 15 minutes. Where do you plan to study? I'll study at home, in the living room, on my computer. How will you study? I'll listen to one or two lessons a day to fill up the 15 minutes. What's your study schedule? Monday through Friday for 15 minutes a day. This makes a lot more sense now, doesn't it? Instead of saying, hopefully I'll learn that language someday and never taking action on your goals, by setting these small measurable goals, you know what you need to do. Okay, let's recap. To set successful language goals, your goals should be one, specific and measurable, two, realistic, three, have an action plan, four, a deadline, and five, be broken down into small monthly goals. So instead of saying, I wanna be fluent in 2019, try, I want to speak 30 minutes of conversation by December 31st, 2019, and then go even smaller and set a small monthly goal. So everyone, it's your turn. Leave a comment and tell me, what's your small, measurable monthly goal? And what's the deadline? Here are some examples you can steal for yourself. Learn 100 words in one month. Speak one minute of your target language in a month. Or do 20 audio lessons in one month. Deadline, January 31st. Now, speaking of lessons, here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, the Ultimate Listening Video Master Course. Honest question, how sharp are your listening skills? With this video master course, they'll be as sharp as a razor. Download it right now. Next, the Talk About Your Body PDF Cheat Sheet. With this cheat sheet, you'll learn words for parts of your body in the target language. Then, there's the Most Common Texting Slang Word List. If you want to text in the language you're learning, you'll love this. You'll learn how to say LOL and other words in your target language. And finally, the How to Express Quantity vocab list, where you learn how to say if there's a lot, a few, or a little bit of something. To get these free lessons and resources, just click the link in the description below. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about the seven tested timeless ways to learn a language.
In the meantime, like and share this video and leave a comment to tell us what language learning tactics you'd like us to talk about. See you next time. Bye. Oi, gente. Hi, everyone. Paloma here. E aí, tudo bom? Yay, how are you? Welcome to top 10 phrases to amaze native speakers. Além do português, eu também sei outras línguas. Apart from Portuguese, I can speak other languages as well. If you say this phrase in Brazil, people will be so jealous at you because many Brazilians can even speak English. So if you just say, eu posso falar outras línguas também, I can speak other languages as well. They will be like, okay, he's a genius. Ele é um gênio. Além do português, eu também falo inglês, francês e espanhol. Apart from Portuguese, I can also speak English, French and Spanish. Especially for people that can speak Portuguese, Spanish, even French and Italian are very easy. Not very easy, but easier to learn. Estou aprendendo português sozinho. I'm learning Portuguese by myself. I think it's a pretty amazing sentence to say because people usually go to language schools in Brazil to learn English and Spanish usually. But if you just say, you know, I'm learning that by myself, they will be like, wow. No, I don't go to school. I estou aprendendo português sozinho. No, I don't go to school. I'm learning Portuguese by myself. Estou estudando português faz 10 anos. I've been learning Portuguese for 10 years. That's a pretty long, hard working path, right? Eu sei português porque eu estou aprendendo português faz 10 anos. I know Portuguese because I've been learning Portuguese for 10 years. Eu entendi tudinho que você disse. I completely understood everything you said. Using diminutives in Portuguese sentence shows that you can, you know, play with the language. So it seems like you're fluent in the language. If you say tudinho, that means small everything. <laughs> Sounds like very Portuguese, very Brazilian. Não precisa repetir. Eu entendi tudinho que você me disse. You don't need to repeat. I completely understood what you said. Eu consigo assistir filmes em português sem legendas. I can watch movies in Portuguese without subtitles. Famous Brazilian movies you should watch are City of God, Cidade de Deus, or Tropa de Elite, The Elite Squad, which are all-time famous movies in here. Não precisa se preocupar. Eu consigo assistir filmes em português sem legenda. You don't need to worry. I can watch movies in Portuguese without subtitles. Levou apenas um ano para me tornar fluente. It took me only one year to become fluent. I think if you're a native Spanish speaker, you might say levou apenas um ano. But if you're an English speaker, it might take a little longer if you don't dedicate, you know, all your time to learn Portuguese. If someone tells you, wow, seu português é ótimo. Wow, your Portuguese is great. You can answer, Não, não é nada. Levou apenas um ano para me tornar fluente. No, it's nothing. It took me only one year to become fluent. Obrigada, mas na verdade eu não sou brasileira. Thank you, but I'm not Brazilian, actually. Yeah, I think that's the most amazing phrase you want to hear. Nossa, eu achei que você fosse brasileira. Wow, I thought you were Brazilian. Obrigada, mas na verdade eu não sou brasileira. Thank you, but actually I'm not Brazilian. Português é divertido e fácil de aprender. Portuguese is fun and easy to learn. If you tell this phrase to your friends, I think they'll be amazed because we know Portuguese is not that easy. And you just say, No, não é difícil. Português é divertido e fácil de aprender. No, it's not hard. Portuguese is fun and easy to learn. Posso memorizar umas 50 palavras novas por dia em português. I can memorize around 50 new Portuguese words a day. Um, yeah, that's pretty amazing. Usually people can memorize 10 to 20 words a day, but if you say you can memorize 50, they will be like, wow. Another word for memorize would be decorar, to know by heart. Você pode me ensinar mais. Eu posso decorar umas 50 palavras por dia em português. You can teach me more. I can memorize around 50 new words a day in Portuguese. Vou falar português como um falante nativo em 3 anos. I'll speak Portuguese like a native speaker in 3 years. That's a bold challenge, but if you're up to it, I think that's totally doable to learn and to be fluent in a language in three years. Eu vou estudar muito e vou falar português como um nativo em três anos. I'll study a lot and I'll speak Portuguese as a native speaker in three years. 
the end. Acabou. That's it for today. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy our video and subscribe to our website and our channel. See you next time. Ciao! Portuguese. You can speak other languages as well. Portuguese, Japanese, Chinese. No, Chinese. Ni hao. Bo jiao bao luo ma. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.